acting video for you and I've been asked to talk a little about the problems facing singers in a variety of contexts who need to act and uh, sing at the same time. So let's, let's get on with that. So the first thing uh, to remember is that you are not a person singing a song, but you are somebody in a world where people sing. So if you think of a musical, one of, in our acting terminology, the given circumstances of a musical is that you live in a world where when people get to an emotional point, they have to sing. And usually in musicals, the key songs come at key crisis points or key dramatic moments, key relevatory moments in the piece. So now you have this urge to share your feelings or to tell somebody what you think. A way of working on this is to think, I'm not preparing to sing. I have a message and I'm going to deliver it. A song is just the medium by which you're doing this. So if you're working as a singer, there's so much work you have to do on technique uh, that you can get very bogged down in, the, in, in, am I hitting the melody? Am I doing this? Am, am, I, am, I, am I getting everything exactly right? And then the acting can be sacrificed. To ensure that that's not the case, you have to steep yourself in that work and then let go, but allow yourself to use the song. The song is your means to communicate. And it just happens to be that that's the way you work in this world, that everybody sings when they get to a certain point. So in the build up to the song, don't be thinking, oh, I've got to get this right. I've got to do that. But start to really feel the urgency of the message. Tune into the rhythm. Tune into the feelings and the emotion that the introduction of the song is giving you and allow the need to sing to slowly build up so that when you get to that point, it's like a Coca-Cola bottle that's been shaken up and the top is released and the energy and the message burst forth. So you're holding back and slow. Sorry, my cat's fiddling with the... Um, with the computer. Um, so you hold back until you allow the energy of the song to burst forth. We're singing because we have a message. How do we prepare for that? One of the things you can do is ask these fundamental acting questions. Who, what, where, when, why? So if you go through your character and you go through the scene and you say, who? You're asking, who am I? Who am I speaking to? Who am I singing about? Who am I trying to convince? Who is listening? So you go through the whole song and you're saying who, who, who. But you're also asking yourself who you are as a character. What? What are you doing? What happened just before you started singing? But initially, if you focus more on what happened, then you're going to find the reason for singing. You'll find the energy to sing and you'll realise that it's coming out of a specific place. And always, always be specific. Be specific. When? When is this happening? When is what you're singing about happening? When did it happen? When will you be happy? When in the structure of the performance, if it's a musical, does this happen? After what events, what causes you to react in a certain way? When you've just been let down, when you've been criticised, when a terrible, when terrible news has been received, we're in a different sort of state of mind. Where? Where are you? How does that affect you? How does where you are affect your state of mind, your social conditions, uh, the emotional state you're in? Why? Why do you have to say this? Why are you singing? Why do you need to share these things? So this gives you the opportunity to go through the text. So it's very clear that as we're working on acting for song, we're not working with a conventional text. And if you're acting with a text, uh, you work with something called subtext, which, as the word implies, and as I'm sure many of you know, the real intention of the words is not in the words, but underneath the words. Therefore, my text might be, how are you today? My subtext might be, I know what you did, you betrayed me, and I'm going to make you 
tell me what happened. So how are you today? It's going to completely change the way you say it. It's a beautiful day. But what if it's a beautiful day at a funeral? Then the subtext is going to completely change the way uh, you operate. Now, if you're lucky enough to work with uh, a song, uh, one written by Sondheim, you have everything that would ordinarily be uh, played in the subtext in the rhythm, in the lines of music between the, the words, in the structure of the piece. So you can start to feel my body operates this way. This is the rhythm of the music. These little tunes, these are my thoughts that are happening before I sing. So don't just sing the line and then take a breath and then deliver the next line and leave the music to it. Sing the line and let the music play you between the lines. Have the thoughts of the character, have the thoughts of the situation between the lines. And in a song, it's happening within the structure of the music. Okay, so the next tip is one to help you bring the words of the song more deeply into your being, into your heart, into your uh, state of mind. Uh, and the trick is simply to go through the text word by word, phrase by phrase, and repeat and repeat and repeat. I am, I am, I am. Now, there's no point in just repeating coldly. You need to, each time you say, I am, think about the I that is the character again. Think about being in character and think about the context. So I am, I am the one that's hurt. I am, I am the one that has to express. I am the one that was left on the station. I am the one that needs attention. I am the one that dreams this dream. I am the one that hopes they can be better. Now, each one of these gradually, each one of these little mini phrases will gradually, gradually, gradually build more and more detail into your understanding of the song. And you just close your eyes and you let the words drop into your body and you repeat them and let the associations come until they become sensations in the body, physical sensations. Because acting is an attempt to create sensation and the sensation is what we work with so drop in repeat the lines question them go back to who why where what when keep asking see the images now every image in the piece means something if you're a character and you're being poetic just be poetic don't have to add poetry to poetry. Just sing the lines and think, I'm really pleased with the way I put that together. If we're working with Shakespeare, we call this coining uh, the verse. Uh, and coining the verse means I've just invented this perfect phrase to express how I feel. So you own the poetry. You don't have to be poetic. You pass the data on and you mean it. Um, if you speak about a person, see them. If you sing about a person, see them, see their eyes, see the way they spoke to you last, see how you feel about them, see what you want from them, smell them, know what clothes they wear. If you talk about a place, know what that place feels like, know what it looks like, know what its physical atmosphere is. You gradually build these details. If you see it, the audience will. And if you don't see it, the audience won't. The next thing you can do is you can run a film strip of the images uh, that you've prepared by dropping in with the words and uh, seeing the images in your mind as you're running through it. And you can run that film strip across the back of the audience or behind the camera. See the images as you speak and let them affect you. Share your emotional energy, share your feelings, share your thoughts with the images as they run past you. And that way they won't be trapped in your mind here so you're just looking inward and you share nothing. Your internal process will be shared with the audience. The energy that you're experiencing with those images will move out into the audience and the audience will feel that energy. If you experience a lot of emotion as an actor, it can block your uh, apparatus. So your vocal and respiratory apparatus become stifled. So some people sort of avoid emotion altogether. But it's not a question of avoiding emotion. It's a question of not 
blocking it and not becoming uh, stifled by it. So if something arises, let it flow, let it move to the surface of your skin and hold that feeling around you. Hold it in your aura or in the surface of your skin. This enables you to feel everything without it blocking this system. Two, it actually increases the capacity for the audience to engage with the feelings you're having because you're projecting, you're holding them, and they are radiating outward. Action. So once you have all this in place, don't illustrate a feeling because you'll always end up with something that anyone could have thought of. But go through the process of action and objective. I need to tell you this, and I'm going to this to tell you. So if you focus on your partner, or you focus on the audience, you focus on where you're sharing, and you say, you've hurt me, and therefore I need to let you know, that may be your objective, to let somebody know that you've been hurt. But your action may be to bully them into understanding. You might cajole them into understanding, you might lecture them into understanding. And each one of those is going to be a completely different performance. An action is something done to someone to achieve a result. I something you. I push you. I provoke you. I tease you. It's an active verb. If you're interested, there, is, there are a number of things written about this. There's a book called The Actors Thesaurus, which lists all the, uh, all the active verbs. And you can go there and you can have a look at that. But if you make uh, a line or an idea or an intention, an action, then you make it specific. You make it count and you make it direct and you create a much more focused a much, and you create a much more focused performance than one that is just based on vague impressions and feelings. So technically, there's something that you can do to pin your performance down, and it's called anchoring. So let's say you have three spots at the back of the room. You look one there, you look one there, and you look there. So each one of those is an anchor for your performance. It means that every time you need to look somewhere, you've got a specific place to go. And when you go there, you can take the energy of one, you bring it and you go to the next. Otherwise, you can be looking everywhere or everything's over here and these people can't see it. Or you're looking that way and no one else here can see it. This way, you can bring in the whole of the audience and gently breathe to the back of the room as you're doing that. Now, if you place some of these objects in your film strip uh, there, so you place some of the characters in the, in the story or you place memories in those places, then when you look, you won't just anchor yourself in space, but you'll also anchor yourself in the material of the piece. Anchoring and having a very specific relationship with an image in that space.